To his millions of fans, Elvis Presley was simply the king. He didn't invent rock and roll, but he did carry it into millions of living rooms around the world. Then, in August 1977, at the age of 42, the king proved that he was mortal. His death, as they say, was the end of an era, but it was also the start of an extensive cover-up. Elvis sold nearly 800 million records. That's one for every family on earth. Without exception, his 28 movies all made money at the box office. As the years wore on, the swivel-hipped idol of the 50s became bloated and prematurely old, but he remained an idol nonetheless, exalted in life and suddenly in death. The body of Elvis Aaron Presley was taken to the Baptist Memorial Hospital in Memphis. There, eight doctors carried out an autopsy. They could find no illness or injury likely to result in death. But the county medical examiner, Dr. Jerry Francisco, overruled them. Acting on his own initiative, without consulting the doctors who carried out the autopsy, Dr. Francisco announced that Elvis Presley had died of a heart attack. Results of the autopsy are that the cause of death is a cardiac arrhythmia due to undetermined causes. Elvis's fans and his fiancée, Ginger Alden, were left in the dark. All of us had heard at the same time that it was a heart attack. Do you believe in your own mind right now that that and that alone caused his death? Right. In the very beginning, I did. I just, uh, you know, I, I think it, God, it was Elvis's time to go. So I, I think he took him. But, uh, but then again, in my mind, there are a lot of unanswered questions. Did Elvis Presley die of a heart attack? Or was there another, more sinister cause? Dr. Francisco consistently refused to release results of the autopsy, or to be interviewed. Eventually, though, one of the eight doctors who examined Elvis's body, Noel Florendo, agreed to tell what he knew. In my opinion, I did not see any evidence of a heart attack, morphologically. Morphologically meaning? Meaning there was no gross evidence of a heart attack. So what was the cause of death? Polypharmacy that Elvis Presley died of the interaction of several drugs? Most probably, yes. Tests by three separate laboratories confirmed the doctor's suspicion. After analyzing body tissue, they reported traces of 10 separate drugs. Elvis Presley had died not from a heart attack, but from drug abuse. I take vitamin E. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was only kidding. I don't know. I just... Elvis Presley was no street addict. The drugs that killed him were legal, provided on prescription by doctors who were so loyal, starstruck, or whatever, that they forgot the interests of their patient. As you'll see, Elvis Presley was prescribed more than 5,000 pills, sedatives, and tranquilizers in the last seven months of his life. That's an average of 25 pills a day. And as I said, they were all prescribed by doctors, giving rise to the question, who killed Elvis? What follows is a special investigation of the death of Elvis Presley from a reporting team led by Geraldo Rivera of the American Broadcasting Company. It starts with a reconstruction of the last few hours of Elvis's life. Like many people in show business, he was a night owl. His day began after dark. About an hour before midnight on August the 15th, 1977, Elvis leaves his mansion, Gracelands, to keep a dental appointment with Dr. Lester Hoffman. With him are his fiancée, Ginger Alden, his cousin, Billy Smith, and his longtime friend, Lester Hodge. Elvis is due to start a new concert tour the following day and wants his teeth cleaned and two fillings replaced. We returned back to Graceland at about 1.30. And Elvis and I went upstairs and Elvis turned on the television in his room to relax for a little while. Then Elvis started talking about his tour and started talking about our wedding plans and about announcing our engagement at his Memphis concert. At about 6.30, Elvis called downstairs for Ricky Stanley to bring up his packet of medication to help him get to sleep because he was so nervous about, he was always kind of keyed up for starting a tour. So 
Ricky brought it up. Elvis took his packet of medication and started reading a book on psychic energy then. He thought that would help him fall asleep. Then I fell asleep. So at about 8 o'clock, I woke up because Elvis was restless, saying that he just couldn't sleep. So he called downstairs for Ricky again, and Ricky came up and brought up uh, another packet of medication. A second packet. Right. Elvis took that, and then I went back to sleep. The third time I was awakened again, Elvis was starting to get up, saying that he still couldn't sleep. He took the book on psychic energy with him, and he started toward the bathroom door. And I said, no, don't fall asleep. And he turned and smiled at me and said, oh, OK, I won't. And then he went to the bathroom. I went back to sleep, and I slept until 2 o'clock. At that time, I rolled over, and I looked at the clock, and it said 2 o'clock then. And the bathroom door was still shut. So at that time, I went in, and I knocked on the door, and no one answered. So I opened the door, and that was when I saw Elvis. According to the medical investigator, the body was purple or deep blue, and rigor mortis had set in. Elvis had apparently been dead for several hours. After a flurry of desperate activity, two paramedics arrived from the Memphis Fire Department. They needed help to lift Elvis onto their stretcher. He weighed 18 stone. At the Baptist Memorial Hospital, an emergency resuscitation team worked on Elvis. But it soon became obvious they could do nothing. Even at this stage, there was some suggestion that drugs may have played a part in his death. Don Warlick from the medical examiner's office was handed a cryptic note from the police. EP, OD, question mark, DOA, BMH. Elvis Presley, overdose, question mark, dead on arrival, Baptist Memorial Hospital. At 3.30 in the afternoon, Elvis Aaron Presley was pronounced dead. But despite all the rumours, and as it later turned out, all the hard evidence to the contrary, Dr. Jerry Francisco continued to maintain that Elvis had died of a heart attack. The cause of death has been ascribed to hypertensive heart disease and coronary artery heart disease as a contributory factor. But as we said, tissue samples analysed at three different laboratories told a different story. After two months of tests, the Bioscience Organization in Los Angeles discovered that Elvis had been abusing a wide range of drugs. These included codeine, morphine, qualude, and so the list continues. Valium, Valmid, Placidil, Nembutal, Phenobarbital, Pentobarbital, and Butobarbital. All these drugs are downers used to bring on relaxation and sleep. Several are addictive. The findings were confirmed and amplified by two other laboratories. The final step was to take the data to two doctors for analysis. First, Los Angeles toxicologist, Dr. Matthew Ellenhorn. The cause of death was an, was an overdose of codeine and an overdose of methaquilone or qualude. And that was contributed to by an a presence in the bloodstream which indicated that the patient had taken probably within the previous 24 hours at least five additional drugs known to produce depression of the central nervous system of depression of the brain a second opinion from dr. Cyril Weck one of the foremost medical examiners in the United States there were several drugs involved here the principal offender in this case was codeine which is a pain reliever but which is known to have a CNS depressant effect. Other drugs included Valium, a tranquilizer, Valmid, a sedative, Placidil, a sedative, Phenobarbital, a sedative, and Butabarbital, a sedative. It's um, incredible, really, that all these drugs should have been given to the patient simultaneously. There was one other drug involved, Methoquilone, which is a tranquilizer. Knowing now about the virtual laundry list of drugs, Rivera tracked down some of Elvis Presley's closest friends. David so Stanley was his stepbrother and worked at Graceland's as a security man. How often did he see Elvis taking drugs? Every day. Last two years of Elvis's life, it was every day. What would Elvis do if he didn't get the drugs he wanted? He'd get upset sometimes. We were in Vegas one time and uh, like we were there for like eight weeks, you know, and uh, 
I was was getting his drugs, but it got to a point to where his doctor wanted to shut him off in Vegas. And uh, we couldn't reach the doctor anymore. So he jumped up on the table one day and he pulled out his 45 and he says, I'll buy a goddamn drugstore if I have to. He says, I'm gonna get what I want. He says, you people better realize that either you're with me or against me. Either you take it or you, I'll buy your plane ticket home. When I first started dating Elvis, I was only, I just turned 20 at the time, and no one ever told me anything about what to expect, how the, the group was or anything like that. I had to learn everything on my own. And the people that had been around Elvis for all these years, when I saw Elvis take something, or which was mainly before he would go to sleep, I thought to myself, well, it must not really be harmful if it's prescribed. And if uh, these people over the years, if Elvis is still doing it, then it must not really be very harmful for him. I would say it was very, very bad, and uh, we knew if it continued that something like this would happen. We knew it would just be a matter of time. Rick Stanley, another stepbrother, was on duty at Graceland's the night yes, Elvis died. Were you the person who filled the prescription at Baptist Memorial? Yes, I was. What was it? It was Dilaudid. Dilaudid, a very powerful morphine-type drug. Class A narcotic. Then what did you do with it? Well, I went back to the Elvis' house, went upstairs, and gave it to him. Approximately how many pills? Six to eight pills. Was that common? Yes, it was. Did it happen every night that you were on duty? Oh, yeah. Every night I was on duty. Elvis uh, couldn't sleep without it. W.S. Nash was the pharmacist on duty when Rick Stanley went to have the prescription filled. It was for Dilaudin, a drug so powerful that scripts are usually issued only in serious cases. And Elvis, remember, had only had a couple of fillings. Mr. Nash is now retired, but he's still haunted by the night of August the 15th, 1977. Had that been the only drug he had taken, it probably wouldn't have killed him. But in combination with others, I'm almost sure it did. So far, we've established that Elvis Presley was dependent on drugs. Drugs prescribed by doctors who were supposed to help him. Instead, they helped Elvis to destroy himself. He was once in charge of the narcotics division of the Los Angeles Police Department. He retired to become a private investigator and between 1969 and 1975 made several inquiries into the people who were supplying Elvis Presley with drugs. His client was Vernon Presley, Elvis's own father. In your opinion, should his attending physicians have noticed the fact that he was abusing these drugs? He'd either have to be a retarded alligator not to notice that, or a totally incompetent medical doctor. In your opinion, did the doctors therefore contribute to Elvis Presley's death? Was Elvis Presley murdered, in a sense? I think anyone that's abandoned and given something that causes their death for whatever reason is murder. Now, I'm not saying first degree, premeditated, but it's a degree of murder. It's negligence. There's negligent homicide. It could be the same thing. If you go to a bar and the bartender serves you 25 drinks in a row and you die there, somebody's guilty of your death. That's negligent homicide, which is just, another term is murder. Jack Kelly, another former narcotics officer, he too worked on the Presley case. He could get whatever he wanted anytime he wanted it. Uh, most of them that I found were only too anxious to give it to him. How so? Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, uh, the, for a variety of reasons. Uh, for one thing, you know, there's doctors who, uh, through uh, carelessness or irresponsibility, 
will get their patients addicted. And there's doctors who do it for monetary gain. And there are doctors, dentists, who do it uh, because, they're, because they're starstruck. You find that particularly out here in Hollywood. And uh, unfortunately, Elvis was a victim of all three. What about Max Shapiro? Max Shapiro was a source of supply for Elvis, uh, unquestionably. You're sure of that? Yes, I'm, I'm positive of that. Dr. Max Shapiro, Dr. Max to his patients, is certainly a very unusual dentist. To start with, he makes house calls. He's also known in Hollywood as a Dr. Feelgood, a man who makes his patients feel no pain by prescribing narcotics, whether there's a medical need for them or not. How would you respond to being called a Dr. Feelgood? Dr. Painless would be all right. <laughs> but uh, if I worked on a patient, they would never have pain. That was one of my very, very strong attitudes. I would, I myself am afraid of pain. And I understand what a patient goes through. I've been lied to by doctors. They told me things wouldn't hurt, and they treated me, and it did hurt. Did you make sure that Elvis suffered no pain? Yes, of course, as all patients. Outside the office later, Rivera asked Dr. Max for a quick glance inside his briefcase. No, because I have narcotics in there now and things. So I don't like to have it open and display. I don't like people even know where I keep things because I've been robbed. But there are narcotics in there now. Yes, there are narcotics in there now. Earlier, Rivera managed a brief look. He saw 15 to 20 bottles of narcotics, but no dental tools. Max uh, gave Elvis anything he wanted. He was like the rest of the most of the doctors, just gave him any kind of medication he wanted, volunteered it. Like what? Well, uh, barbiturates, uh, some narcotics, and amphetamines, things like that. Quaaludes? Oh, yeah, quaaludes. Elvis was never a drug uh, taker, and he never took drugs at all. Um, the only thing he took was sleeping pills just to sleep, just like everybody else, I guess, in his field. But I've never known Elvis to take any hard drugs whatsoever. Dr. Elias Gannon was Elvis's doctor in Las Vegas. Rick Stanley disputes his claim that he never provided the singer with narcotics. Elias was no different than the rest. You know, Elias uh, did the same thing. Now, I'll say, Elias, to me, seemed like he cared for Elvis. But, you know, uh, after a while, he fell into it like the rest of them and uh, just was giving him whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted. Were there any doctors that said no to Elvis Presley? Not that I know of. And I was around him for a long, long time. Not that I know of. Nobody hardly said no to Elvis Presley. Dr. Gannon refused to be interviewed. But the doctor closest to Elvis Presley was George Nicopolis, known to members of the so-called Memphis Mafia as Dr. Nick. The records indicate that, especially in the last year of his life, he prescribed certain medications to Elvis Presley in quite extraordinarily large amounts. Why? I can't uh, comment on that, and I don't believe that's true. Well, the records we have, Doctor, and mm -hmm. I'll say this as gently as I possibly can, indicate that from January 20th, 1977, until August 16th, 1977, the day he died, you prescribed to Elvis Presley, and the prescriptions are all signed by you, over 5,000 scheduled to narcotics and or amphetamines. That comes out to something like 25 per day. I don't believe that. Well, is it something that you'd like to refresh your recollection on or is it something that you deny? I deny. After that interview, the state of Tennessee began proceedings to stop Dr. Nick from practicing medicine, principally because of his treatment of Elvis Presley. We have charged him with unprofessional conduct, gross incompetence, gross ignorance, 
gross negligence and gross malpractice concerning his dispensing of narcotic substances. Specifically, we have charged him with dispensing, prescribing, and issuing narcotic and controlled substances not in good faith to relieve pain and not for a legitimate, legitimate medical reason. This is the worst case of overprescribing or of indiscriminate prescribing that I have ever seen in my time as, a, as an investigator with the state of Tennessee. The charges against Dr. Nick list 16 patients, including Jerry Lee Lewis and the doctor's own daughter, Chrissy. But it was Elvis Presley who got the lion's share. More than 5,400 pills in the last seven months of his life. 25 pills a day. Why would you prescribe that amount of drugs in that limited period of time? I think you didn't understand me. I said, I don't think that I did. You don't think that you did? Or I know you... I did. You're absolutely stating that you did yeah. not. Friendship was certainly one reason why Dr. Nick gave Elvis whatever he wanted, virtually whenever he wanted it. But he also depended heavily on Elvis and his entourage for financial support. Dr. Nick is in big trouble because of his investment in this $5 million office complex. Only one third of the building is occupied. The record shows that the doctor borrowed $200,000 from Elvis in 1975 and another $55,000 in 1977. Much of the money went towards his elaborate home in Memphis. May I ask one question? No. One general question. Do you have any regrets? Sir? No regrets. Right opposite the doctor's office is the pharmacy where most of the prescriptions were filled. Jack Kirsch never thought to question the dosage. More than 5,000 pills in seven months. 600 on the day before Elvis died. Yes, possibly in my own mind I would question this thing, but I never questioned the doctor. In light of what happened to Elvis Presley, do you have any regrets? I, I feel prescriptions. Yeah, I did not give I did not give the drugs to the patient. I gave the prescriptions to the doctor. No, I don't have any regrets. You were just following orders. I was following orders. For two years, Memphis did more than mourn its favorite son. It also covered up for him and for the people who had a hand in his death. Point one. There was no real police investigation. Six hours after Elvis was pronounced dead, long before the medical or scientific evidence was available, the Memphis police said the case was closed. Point two. Medical authorities who searched Gracelands for drugs now admit they didn't search the resident nurse's caravan where all the drugs were kept. Point three. Elvis Presley's stomach contents were destroyed without being analysed. Point four, there was no inquest. Point five, no attempt was made to find where Elvis got his drugs. Point six, all photographs of the death scene, toxicological reports and notes made by the medical examiner were destroyed. Little wonder city officials suspect a cover-up. The Elvis mystique completely pervades the Memphis area. And if there are individuals who are so concerned with the mystique that they do not care to know the truth, then I feel that somewhere along the way, someone has to take it upon himself to see that the truth is brought up. But you definitely feel there's a cover-up. I'm positive about that. The question is not, you know, did he die because his heart stopped? Of course he did, but why did his heart stop? Why did he have an irregular heartbeat? That's the question that needs to be determined and needs to be made available to the public. For Memphis, I suppose, it was a choice between the legend and the truth. In any event, as a result of that report, a lot of things have happened. First, a criminal investigation is finally underway. Second, a judge has ordered the Baptist Memorial Hospital to make the results of the autopsy available to the producers of the television program. Third, Dr. Max Shapiro, or Dr. Feelgood, is now under investigation in California. And finally, on top of his other troubles with the law, Dr. Nick is being sued for more than half a million dollars by another of his patients who claims to have been a victim of overprescription. 
But whatever the truth about Elvis Presley, nothing Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.